Hello, my name is Jean-François Verrier, Server Technologies Curriculum Director. In this presentation, I'll give you a quick overview of the multi-tenant architecture. So what is a multi-tenant container database? A multi-tenant container database, that we also call a CDB, as opposed to a non-CDB, is simply the recipient for multiple databases sharing certain resources. One of those resources is an instance that we call the CDB instance. Like a non-CDB instance, a CDB instance is comprised of an SGA, background processes, foreground processes representing your sessions, and files like the alert log, the SP file, and for example a wallet. The multi-tenant container database itself and its instance represent a special container associated with the container ID 0. Inside a CDB, you find another type of container called the root. Its name is CDB dollar root and is associated with the container ID 1. At the physical level, that container contains a set of files like in the non-CDB case. That is, control files, redo log files, data files associated with the system and sysox tablet spaces, undo files, temporary files, and user data files. In addition, the root container can have flashback logs, archive log files, and change tracking file if the associated functionality is used. At the logical level, the root container also has a data dictionary containing objects metadata stored in tables like obj$ or awr tables, but also dictionary object definitions like dbms packages and dictionary views. However, as we will see later, a new level of abstraction has been added to the famous DBA views to have a global view of all container objects. So in addition to the DBA views that now show you what you have in a particular container, we have the CDB views showing information across all containers if you query them from the root. In addition to the root container, we find pluggable databases, also called PDBs, which are the last level of container. A PDB appears to users and applications as if it were a traditional non-CDB. Inside one CDB, there is always a special PDB called the seed, which name is PDB$seed and is associated with container ID 2. This PDB is only used for cloning purposes. So you could clone that seed into another PDB inside the same CDB very easily. Inside one CDB, you can have up to 253 PDBs, including the seed. Each PDB contains a set of data files. So the seed contains the system and sysox tablet spaces, as well as a temporary tablet space. For the other PDBs, each will have its own system and sysox tablet spaces, and optionally, a temporary tablet space, as well as users tablet spaces. Not, however, that PDBs do not have control files nor redo log files. These are shared amongst PDBs through the ones that exist in the root container. Of course, each PDB will have its own set of foreground processes representing sessions connecting to each PDB. Another structure that is shared among PDBs is the SGA. For example, the buffer cache now contains a new reference for each block corresponding to the PDB ID that block refers to. Same is true with child cursors, for example. At the logical level, a PDB has a dictionary, like any Oracle database. However, instead of redefining all the data dictionary objects, the idea is to create pointers to objects that are created and defined in the root dictionary. This is done to avoid duplication as much as possible. Two types of pointers exist. Metadata links, 
which are pointers to data dictionary objects definitions like the dictionary view definitions or the DBMS packages and object links which are pointers to data dictionary objects data. For example, AWR tables content is stored only in the root. The vast majority of the space savings is due to the sharing of the metadata. This is significant if you think that the complete original dictionary definition occupied around 700 megabytes in the root, but represents only 200 meg in each PDB because of this point of business. Another important aspect of a CDB is its particularity of managing what are called common users. Users like sys or system are now defined automatically in each PDB and in the corresponding root container. Common users perform administrative tasks for a CDB. So creating a common user allows the CDB administrator to create at once a user that is replicated in each PDB. Some tasks, such as starting up a CDB instance or unplugging a PDB, can be performed only by a common user. As opposed to a common user, a local user is defined in the PDB's own data dictionary, and so it is not known outside of that PDB. Therefore, a local user can connect only to the PDB where it is defined. A local user is specific to a particular PDB and owns a schema in that PDB. You can see a local user just like a user in a non-CDB environment. You can now create common roles that are defined in every container. This way, it is easy to create at once a role that is replicated in all PDBs. A role in a non-CDB environment maps to a local role in a PDB. A local role is defined in the PDB's own data dictionary, and so it is not known outside of that PDB and can only be used within its PDB. The privileges are commonly referred to as local or common privileges. But to be more precise, a privilege is either granted locally with the clause container equal current or globally with the clause container equal all. In a CDB, PDBs might have different levels of priority you can create CDB resource plans to distribute resources to different PDBs based on these priorities. A PDB resource plan determines how the resources allocated to a specific PDB are allocated to consumer groups within that PDB. A PDB resource plan is similar to a resource plan for a non-CDB. Another important aspect is that a local user can access data in another PDB using database links, like in a non-CDB environment. However, in a CDB environment, a database link is much faster between PDBs as it has been specifically optimized for that purpose. The last thing I'd like to show in this architecture is about the listener. By default, the Oracle database creates one CDB service corresponding to your container database and allowing you to connect to the root container. In addition, one service is automatically created for each newly created PDB in your environment. You can have a complete list of all the services served by your CDB by looking at the CDB underscore services view. At a high level, you could see a multi-tenant container database and its associated pluggable databases as database virtualization. The multi-tenant container database being the VM server and PDBs being VMs. This is the end of the presentation. Thanks for watching.